It took Milwaukee years to finally come out with a track saw. They had the advantage of watching all of their other competitors put out saws with various features that they could have included into theirs and made it the perfect track saw. But this is what we got. We're gonna go over what they got right, what they got wrong, and then in the end, I'm gonna tell you if we're gonna go team red or team green. Let's go. But first I'll show you all the features that this has, and it is packed full of features, and then I'll compare it to the Festool and see if it lives up to high quality, if you like Festool. And just so you know, I purchased this with my own money. I'm not sponsored, nobody's asking me to make this video. It's all me. Now your Milwaukee track saw will come in this ginormous. This thing is ginormous. Have you seen these toilets? They're ginormous. Pack out box. It is a little too big in my opinion, but there is a ton of space in there that includes a space for your saw, the dust bag, clamps, batteries, uh, pretty much anything you want to store with this saw, it's in there. Now the only thing I don't care for about this saw, other than I think it's a little too big, is the fact that this padding on top is just got a sticky back to it and it's likely going to come off over time. We'll compare the Festool box later. But it is part of the pack out system, so if you're already in that, then it's going to integrate well with you. And then also it's just a super strong box that you can throw it in the truck, in the van, wherever you're taking this to, the job site, and everything's gonna be self-contained. Oh, and it will hold the charger as well. Not sure if I mentioned that. And speaking of the charger, it comes with a rapid charger that will charge both M12 and M18 batteries. So you got basically two batteries you can charge at once on this thing, and it does charge up super fast. It only took less than half an hour probably to fill this one all the way up. When I first plugged it in, it was at one bar, Five minutes later, it was showing four bars, but I don't think it was fully charged yet. I gave it about a half hour, and now we're good to go. I previously reviewed the Craig, the Win, and the Festool saw. I actually compared them all in one video. If you wanna check that out, I'll put it at the end of this video in the description. This is on par, in my opinion, with the Festool, with a few things it's missing, and we'll talk about later. But overall, this is a very nice tool. If you need a track saw and you want a high quality one, I don't think you'll go wrong with this one. When you first get it, you'll put the blade on. It's super simple to do. Now, all you do is you're gonna push this lever right here that's behind the battery. When you press down, it's going to lock it in place so that you can get that arbor. There is an included wrench right on the top. You pull that out and then you can change the blade as normal. Super easy. Speaking of the blade, it does have a riving knife. I really like that feature. Although the Festool goes one step further in my opinion, but the this riving knife is essential to keep things from pinching that blade and causing potential kickback. I like that they included that just like the Craig has it on theirs. A couple of other things to note, it does have a splinter guard. I went ahead and installed this on mine. If we're cutting on this MDF, we'll just drop that down and tighten that up. And that will just help prevent any splintering as you're cutting. Uh, there is a different uh, window that's included that you can pop in there if you just want a clear window to be able to see uh, what's going on there. But I like the splinter guard. I use it on my Festool as well. One pretty cool feature that this has is a scoring feature. You just push this button right there, you flip it up, and that'll put that auto stop on there. So if you're going to uh, cut plywood or something like that that has a veneer on it and you don't want it to, to splinter, or if you just want to make that scoring cut, that's going to stop that blade just below the surface there like you see, and you don't have to worry about uh, trying to hold it there or set a different depth or something like that. So if you already have your depth set, say at three quarters of an inch for uh, plywood, but you do wanna make that scoring cut, that's a great way to do it. Then simply flip it down, and then you can move past that and go ahead and make the full depth cut. The markings on there, really high contrast, I like that. And I like that you can bevel up to 48 degrees, and the way that works, there's two thumb screws on the front as well as on the back that you just loosen, and then it'll tilt over on its own. Now you see it has a stop right there at 22 and a half. You can, that's what that knob does. You can disengage that, leave it like that. It'll go past the 22 and a half every time. But if you wanted a positive stop, you can engage that and it'll stop at 22 and a half. Pretty cool. Once you get all the way out to the 45 degrees, if you want to go past that, there is a button right there that you're going to press forward and then that's going to let it go past the 45 all the way up to 48 degrees. Same thing with negative one. When it comes back, you can push that button and engage that so that it goes to the negative one. I like the depth gauge on this because it has those two depths on there. And what that is for, that's an indicator of if it's off the track, you'll see the single bar. If it's on the track, you'll see the two bar. So if this is setting on the track and we're wanting to cut three quarter inch material, then we'll need to move that to the three quarter inch mark there. But if we're just plunging without the, the track and we're just using it as a saw, just a regular saw, we'll move it up to that first bar. That's what that's for. Also, it's very easy to move. 
and it has positive stops at each one of those marks. I like that. And then of course up here, you'll see this little knob right there, and that's a fine tuning knob. You can loosen or tighten that to adjust that, to dial that in to get the exact right depth that you want every single time. That's what makes track saws so awesome. Now the kit I got came with the M18 high output XC 6.0 battery, whatever that means. It's a big heavy battery and it gives it plenty of power. This is also a variable speed saw and it has a brushless motor. So the battery runtime is gonna last longer because it's a brushless motor and it'll be a little more powerful because of that. Super easy to install the battery and you're ready to roll. The overall fit and finish of the saw is awesome. This outer shroud is some type of aluminum material. It's metal. Hello, anybody home? You can tell the rest of it's pretty much plastic and or rubbery grips on it. And the base plate is also that same aluminum material. It's a very well made tool, I think. Now you can see on the bottom that this has a cam here, the knob on top, you're just gonna turn that and that's gonna twist that cam and adjust this bar on the outermost side. That's gonna tighten and loosen it on the track. You wanna tighten those up just enough so that it's snug and it's not wiggling on the track. After you get it snug, you're good. You just don't wanna over tighten them and make it hard to push. These two knobs adjust the tension and then there's one knob on the very back that is the anti-tip feature. You're gonna push that button in the top, twist that around and you'll see the little piece of metal stick out. That's just a little metal that's gonna catch in that track. And that way when you bevel over to 45 degrees, it won't tip over on you. Some saws have a tendency to do that. Uh, this will prevent that from happening. As far as dust collection goes, the Festool hose will fit right in there nice and snug. Now it doesn't lock in like it does on the Festool track saw that has those grooves lock in but it's so snug, I don't think it's gonna come out. And that's one of the great things about this. It, it just fits, we like that. Both of these saws come with nice boxes. I prefer the Festool box. It's a lot smaller, it takes up less room, especially in a shop like this. I need all the space I can get. And this is taking up a massive amount of space. I can imagine in the bed of a truck or in a work van, this is gonna take up a lot of room too. So that may be something worth considering. Although the box, I think as far as durability, this is a better durable box. This is less durable in my opinion, as far as the plastic goes. Although I'm not carrying these around job sites, job sites, so that doesn't matter to me. As far as warranty goes on the Festool, you're getting a three-year warranty. The Milwaukee, you're getting a five-year warranty on the tool and a three-year warranty on the battery. So Milwaukee's gonna win this as far as warranty goes. Now pricing is where it kind of starts getting a little bit different, but sometimes similar, similar enough that it makes a decision hard. Uh, for the bare tool on the Milwaukee, without a battery, you're gonna pay $399. So you just, if you've already got the M18 platform and you've got some tracks from say Makita, Festool, Powertech, or you buy the Milwaukee tracks, but you've already got batteries, then you can just get the saw for $399. On the Festool, you're gonna pay $549 for just the bare tool. Now I got both of these as a kit and both of them came with batteries, charger, and a 55 inch kit so they're both very similar as far as that goes and the pricing is very close $879 for the Festool $859 for the Milwaukee that's where I think a lot of people are going to have some struggle with on choosing if they don't have either platform but we'll talk about some pros and cons in a minute that may help you decide one thing to consider is the price of accessories moving forward so if you have a 55 inch track that's not enough to make a full eight foot rip on a piece of plywood so you're gonna have to add another track in milwaukee's case if you wanted an additional 55 inch track you can pick that up for 129 dollars the festival track at the same length is going to cost you 155 dollars so it's going to be a little difference there if you need a shorter track the milwaukee has a 31 inch track for 79 dollars where the festival has a 32 inch track for 100 five dollars so you're gonna pay a little more for the festival track again where the pricing really starts to uh, show its ugly face is if you get the 106 inch track that both of these saws have the milwaukee will cost you 250 dollars for a 106 inch track the festival 106 inch track is 465 dollars that is nonsense on the tracks the only thing that's not compatible on these tracks is this anti-tip feature when you turn it for the uh, Milwaukee track, there's a groove right there that that pin slides into that's not on the Festool track. So when you go onto a Festool track, if you connected these for whatever reason, or if you only have Festool tracks, then that anti-tip feature is not gonna work for you with this saw. Other than that, the track or the saw will ride on that track and cut straight lines just like it would on any other track. You just lose the anti-tip. Now, the Festool and the Milwaukee track will connect together using Festool connectors, because that's what I got, and the saw will work on either track, like I said. However, when you tighten these knobs up to fit this track, 
There is a slight bit of difference in that rail that it rides on as far as thickness goes. The Milwaukee is slightly thicker. When you're sliding and it hits the Festool track, it'll stop because these are tightened to the Milwaukee track. You have to loosen that just a little bit so that it continues and that's actually the case for both of them. So just a word of caution if you're using or trying to use uh, two different tracks together. And as far as blades go, both of these have proprietary blades. This uses a six and a half inch blade. The Festool uses a six and a quarter inch blade. And you really can't find blades other than the ones that are made for these saws. So you have to kind of go with the ones that, that they're selling. Then if you consider cut depth, then you're gonna get about an eighth inch more cut depth out of that bigger blade on the Milwaukee versus on the DeWalt at 90 degrees. And then at 45 degrees, of course, the bigger blade's gonna matter there as well. So you're gonna get more cut depth on the Milwaukee versus the Festool. One thing that's not been published is the Milwaukee's cut depth at 45 degrees. The Festool cut depth at 45 degrees is one and 11 sixteenths of an inch max. For the most part, if you got a kit with a 55 inch track and added an extra 55 inch track so that you're able to rip full eight foot sheets of plywood with them, there's really not a lot of difference as far as price goes. Where you're gonna start seeing the difference is the features, the Festool, it can only go up to 47 degrees, if that matters, where the Milwaukee goes to 48 degrees. <laughs> the Festool has two features that the Milwaukee does not. Number one is the anti-kickback feature. This has a feature that if it leaves the track, in other words, if it gets bound up and it starts to kick back, it stops the motor, very similar to a saw stop. It stops it so that it doesn't kick back and injure you, right? That's an awesome feature to have. This doesn't have that. This does have the riving knife to help prevent that binding though. And the number two feature, which I really didn't realize it was a big deal until I got it, is these batteries are Bluetooth capable. And what that means is it integrates perfectly with the Festool dust extractor, which has Bluetooth. What that means is anytime I power this on, when I have it connected to the Bluetooth, to the dust extractor, it automatically powers on the dust extractor. I don't have to go around here and touch the button and make it come on and then go back. It's just a convenience thing, but it is super handy to have. However, we can get around that on this if you have a Festool dust extractor with the Bluetooth button. And this little button just attaches to the hose, push the button, turns the dust extractor on. So if you have a track saw, you can just plug it in, push the button, make the cut. Not a big deal, but you are losing that as far as feature goes on the Milwaukee versus Festool. Now, a couple of complaints I have about the Milwaukee. Milwaukee had years, years to come out with this thing. They were probably one of the last big tool companies to come out with a track saw. Ryobi beat them on track saw. Come on, man. Now, they had the opportunity to look and see what everybody else was offering and incorporate it into their tool, right? They saw DeWalt's model. They saw Festool. They saw Ryobi. They saw Makita. They saw De everybody. Everybody that had a, a track saw, they were able to look at those tools and I pretty much guarantee you they had them in the shop when they were developing these. And this is what we got. I mean, there's no innovative feature here. There's nothing that's just uh, mind blowing or outstanding. It's just, maybe that's it. Maybe that's just a solid tool based on what everybody else made that was working well. Maybe that's, maybe that's their selling point. It's a good tool. Don't get me wrong. I just wish they would have come out with something that was more innovative, similar to the anti-kickback on the Festool. They just add that little extra something, especially for the price point you're paying for this tool. Two interesting things about the track saw, one of which isn't really obvious. This little thing here, this little notch has a purpose. The reason that's notched like that is the inside notch closest to the battery side. If I wanted to use that as a regular saw without a track, where does the blade go? Well, that inside mark is showing where the inside of the blade is gonna be at 90 degrees. The outside edge shows where the inside of the blade will be at 45 degrees. So so you can use this certainly as a circular saw if you so chose. The next thing I like is the fact that this blade has a break. In other words, when you let off the trigger, it stops almost immediately. I do like that. Check this out. It stops super fast. This edge right here that the blade is against on your track will need to be cut the first time. This is a splinter guard or zero clearance basically. You have to start it up, drop that blade down and cut that so that it fits your blade exactly. Let's go cut a little strip like that off. This is a very good track. It has a non-slip grip on the bottom of it that helps keep it in place so you don't need to use clamps a lot of the time, especially if you're just cutting flat sheet goods like this. However, if you want to ensure that it's not gonna move, you can use clamps, and this kit did come with clamps. I've got the blade depth set to one half inch, and we're fixing to cut this half inch MDF. This will show dust collection more than anything. We'll cut some eight quarter walnut in just a minute to see the power. On the first cut of this MDF, I did notice quite a bit of dust coming out, but that's 
fairly normal, especially on MDF, when there's no cover over that arbor hole where you change the blade, like I have on my Festool. There is one being made by my friend over at Whitworks. If you wanna check that out, he may have one out fairly soon. I'll drop a link to his website so you can keep an eye on that. It greatly reduces the amount of dust that is collected, and you'll see a lot less if you have one of those installed. For this cut, we'll use the dust bag and see how it does. There's a lot more dust airborne, as you can, might can see, I don't know if you can see it, but I can certainly see it on the black background uh, from that dust bag. So dust collection is a plus. Maybe not be a must, but it is a plus. But this did collect a lot of it. One thing I always worry about with cordless track saws is their power. And one way to test that is on a chunk, an eight quarter chunk of walnut. We'll rip a strip and see what happens. If I'm advising you on when you buy your track saw, what tracks to get, at least, at least get two 55 inch tracks or the 106 inch track, just because of this. I like having two because a lot of cross cuts like we did on the MDF don't require a longer track, but if you could put them together, then it basically allows you to cut longer stock like this. If you only get the 55 inch track and you run into something like this, that's where you're gonna be disappointed. So uh, a minimum two 55 inch tracks. To get an idea of the power, we're gonna play this at regular speed with the regular sound. So you may wanna turn down the volume just a smidge. And I'm gonna max out the cut depth. This should give us an idea of the power of the saw. So I stopped just before we get through because I want to know if the XC 5.0 battery will be uh, that much less powerful than the XC 6.0 high output. So we're gonna swap those out. This is the just the regular 5.0 XC and it is fully charged. I actually noticed a difference in the high output versus just the regular 5.0 battery. It wasn't significant, but I did notice there was more load on the saw with the 5.0 battery. So if you can use the 6.0 high, high output or higher, I would do so. As far as cut quality goes with that uh, laminated blade or coated blade, whatever they call it, it did well. I mean, there's no burning, there's no scarring, anything like that. And that's a good thing because uh, they kind of got a proprietary blade they're using, kind of like pistol. Milwaukee had plenty of power to cut through that eight quarter walnut, no problems. No bogging that I noticed. You have to give the saw time to cut the wood, but it was no different than cutting eight quarter with the Festool. So there's plenty of power with that uh, single battery, which I was a little concerned about, but did fine. And when I did switch the batteries out, I could tell a little bit of a difference, not a lot. So obviously battery life is extremely important when you think about using cordless tools. So I'm gonna be cutting four foot strips of this plywood. It's cheap plywood because I'm cheap. <laughs> I didn't wanna waste a bunch of money on plywood. So it's kind of bent, but I'm gonna cut four foot strips off. At the end, I'll count how many four foot strips we were able to cut with this battery. And it's fully charged as you see here, and I've turned this all the way up to six. Let's cut. And just for reference, this is 5 8 plywood. So after all this, I still got a little battery left, but just to stop and show you all of those strips right there, I don't know how many, it is a bunch. I just now started feeling it kind of uh, drag when I'm cutting. We'll see how much longer it lasts. Uh-oh, there it is. Dead, dead, dead. We got a half. Let's count them up. So if my math is correct, 75 four foot strips plus this half, that's 302 feet that I was able to cut on one single battery charge. I think that's pretty impressive. And what's even more impressive to me is the cut quality on this CD plywood with this 40 tooth blade. There's some places where it has a little splintering, but it's very, very minor. Some of it is as clean as a whistle. It is really, really clean. And this is really bad plywood. So color me impressed with the battery. Most of us aren't gonna be cutting, 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 cutting like that with the uh, track saw, just over and over and over and over strips like that. 302 feet, one battery, not bad. Most of those strips are 
one to two inch wide and I almost cut a full sheet of plywood up. I got about two feet left and I had bought another one just in case. As far as dust collection goes, this dust bag is trash. I know what it's for, but it's just gonna keep the dust from blowing off of you, but it fills up very quickly. I dumped it out three times, but it stopped up twice. It's still stopped up. And when it stops up, it takes quite a bit of uh, outlaw English to uh, <laughs> get it out of there so that it starts working again. So uh, I would absolutely use dust extraction if at all possible. Now, if you're in the market for a higher end track saw, which these two are the top in my opinion, which one are you gonna go with? Well, if you're already on the M18 platform, it only makes sense to go with the Milwaukee. If you're not on either platform, that's a decision you're gonna have to make on the pros and the cons. Personally, I'm gonna lean toward my Festool. I really like the saw and I give it an edge simply because of the anti-kickback and the Bluetooth capabilities. And Festool is just a system that I'm already into. So that's one of the main reasons I'm gonna stick with the Festool. But if you are a Milwaukee fan, this is an absolute awesome saw. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it is great, really, really great. I like it a lot. And I will probably interchange these for the next few months just to see uh, which one stays in the shop. You gotta check out five track saw accessories every woodworker needs right there. Go click that box, click in the box, get to the virtual fist pump. Or you can watch the Craig versus Wind versus Festool track saw comparison I did right there.